Rick, really, I'll be fine. You should get Laura home now, okay? Scotty, you have no idea when that tow truck's going to get here, or if, you, if he's even going to be able to fix the car. Yeah, we thought maybe we should follow you back down the hill. Even if it's fixed, it could stop again. That's okay. I'll just give the mechanic a few extra bucks to follow me back to the garage, and I'll get the whole thing checked out then. But I hate to leave you all alone here, Scotty. I'll be okay, Laura. Now, you got school tomorrow, and you should get some rest, okay? Uh, Dr. Weber, I think Laura might have caught a cold on the way up here. Okay, we've got a blanket in the car. We'll keep her all fun with us. Scotty, at least let us give you a ride back down to the car. Oh, no, no, because the guy's going to meet me here, and I, I don't want to goof him up. All right, you call us the second you get home. I don't care what time it is, all right? Rick, uh, caused you guys enough trouble already tonight. Scotty, it wasn't your fault. No, we know that. Just call us, all right? Okay. I'll see you later. Good morning. On your side. Mr. Weber? Laura, I understand there's been some kind of problem up here tonight. I'm glad Lee Baldwin got hold of you, Mr. Weber. I, we had tried earlier when we first heard from Laura, but evidently you weren't home. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Weber, but I didn't get a call from Mr. Baldwin. Mitch Williams, he was going to call on you. Excuse me, but now I'm really confused. Well, I don't understand. How did you know Laura was up here if you didn't hear from Lee Baldwin or from Williams? Dr. Weber, I'll get to that, but first I want to talk to Laura and find out exactly what happened up here. Laura? Mr. Higgins, uh, Laura's a little bit shaken up. Uh, would you mind if I try to make some sense out of all of this? <sighs> sure, go right ahead, Scotty. Well, this friend of mine told me about the lodge here and said it was a great place to have dinner. So I asked Dr. Weber and Rick if it would be all right for me to bring Laura up here tonight. Yes, he did. And we gave our permission. So we left really early so that I could have her home by 9 o'clock. Yes, but it's after 9 o'clock now, Scotty. I know. I'm getting to that. After we finished dinner, we left about 7.30 so she'd have plenty of time to get home by her curfew. But two miles down the road, something happened to the car. The engine just died and I could not get it started. Yeah, who is it? Look, it's me, Bob. Open up. Come on in. I just got home myself. You want a glass of wine? No, I don't want a glass of wine. Look, don't keep me in suspense like this. You know it's cold up on that mountain. You blew it. I knew you blew it or you wouldn't be storming like this. Whoa! <laughs> I did not blow it. As a matter of fact, if I do say so myself, I did everything perfectly. And then some. Well, just tell me, did you fix the carburetor so nobody would ever know you canceled it? I did. And I waited around until your friend Scotty tried to play big shot and fix it. But he couldn't, though, right? Oh, no way. And then after he and little Laura walked back up to the lodge, I got in my car, I drove up there, and I sat and read a newspaper till they walked in. And that's when you called Higgins and reported Laura, right? I sure did. I told him I was an irate citizen doing my civic duty, just like you wanted. Oh, look, you're fantastic. Yeah, oh, you did oh, everything oh, like okay. it perfectly. Okay, but I'm not finished yet. Look, if you spoiled my now, plan, calm I... down, kid. You're showing the same lack of cool now that you did in the beginning, and you could have blown this whole thing if my mind hadn't taken over. Your mind? <laughs> Look, Luke, I really appreciate everything you've done for me, but I am the one that has all things laid out. I mean, the car, the room... Shut you know, up! The... You want to learn something? Listen. Sit down. Sit! All right, suppose we had done everything your way. The car breaks down, Scotty and Laura go back to the lodge, and they call for help, right? Right, but you call Higgins. I did that, okay. Now, Higgins will probably not get there before the mechanic. When the mechanic gets there, he finds out the car is broken down. Right, but you said that he wouldn't know how to fix it, because you said that nobody up there would right, know what right, you Right, 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 right. Now, Higgins comes along, buzzing on up there to find out what's going on with little Laura. And he sees the mechanic, he sees Scotty and Laura all standing by the car. So he stops. Yeah, well, there's only one road that goes up there, I think. Don't think, Bobby, no. And you know what he'll do then? Then he would have got out, he'd have said, gee, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Next time, drive a car that works. And he'd give him a lift home. Case dismissed. Well, what about the room reservation? Oh, Bobby, the case is closed. Well, you could have called Mr. Higgins the next day. You could say that you were the deaf cook. You could get more in trouble Yes, that I way. can do that, but that's too muddy. I mean, what did you make it so cool? Number one, after I called Higgins, I got the name of the garage that Scotty called. Then I got in my car. I drove back down the mountain, and I fixed that car better than new. Fixed it? Why? Shut up and listen! Number two! Then 
I'd stopped on my way home, I called the garage. I told them I was Scotty Baldwin and to forget it because the car works fine. So that means that Laura and Scotty are going to be at the lodge waiting when Mr. Higgins gets there? That's right. And if he doesn't find out about the room reservation right away, he will. As soon as they find out, Scotty Baldwin called the garage and said, forget it, because that car is running like a dream. And it will be because you fixed it. Oh, look, you're incredible. And then Mr. Higgins is going to notice them to just want to be together, and they might have been everything. The phone call. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't I at least get a thank you? Oh, thank you. You can have anything in the world you want. I'm finally going to see Laura behind bars in the phone school. And you can start smiling again, little sister, because nobody's ever going to know you had anything to do with this. Nobody. And the manager gave me a name of a garage that was open all night up in Brewster. But they should have been here a long time ago, because I called them when, when you called your folks. Well, it took us over an hour to get here, didn't it? Oh, at least. We just got here a couple of minutes before you did. I still can't figure out how you heard about Laura so quickly. Well, all I can tell you is that I got a phone call from someone who saw Laura having dinner here. And who knew that she was under a strict 9 o'clock curfew? Yeah, but wait a minute. Anybody that reads the paper knows that. Mr. Higgins. Was it a girl who called? No, Laura. A man. The call threw me because not that many people know I'm assigned to your case. There are a lot of crackpots out there, Mr. Higgins, and I think my family's heard from just about every one of them through this order. Excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Uh... You gave me the name of a gas station up in Brewster about an hour ago. I remember. Um, haven't they arrived yet? No, no, they haven't. But I told them they were going to be late to let me know. So, so would you let me know? I'd be happy to. What's your name? Scotty Baldwin. In the meantime, I'm going to call them again. Excuse me. I saw you talking to that young man. Is his name Scotty Baldwin? Yes. Why? Look, has anyone been at the desk this evening asking any questions about Mr. Baldwin or Miss Laura Weber? No, but I'm very glad Mr. Baldwin identified himself. See, we're sold out tonight, and I was just about to give his room away. His room? Yes, Mr. Baldwin telephoned the lodge this afternoon and requested a double room for tonight. It's right here in the book. Well, I guess all I can do now is wait. Mr. Baldwin, you better call the garage right back. There seems to be some confusion. Why, well, what's wrong? They said you canceled the tow truck because the car was working fine now. Great, great. I'll give them a call right now. Scotty. Huh? One of you and I just take my car and go down and see if we can get yours started, huh? Uh, well, I'd say fine, Mr. Higgins, but I know it's not going to start because I tried it a bunch of times and the thing is dead. Scotty, one more thing. Hmm? Did you call here this afternoon and make a reservation in your name for a double room tonight? Wait, wait, wait. I called and I made a reservation for dinner. Not for a room. The manager has it in his reservation book now. I saw it myself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I don't like it. Oh, I don't like what you're implying either. Look, just, just cool down, Scotty. I'm not accusing you of anything, huh? Now, let's just get down to your car and see if, uh, see if we can get it started. But it's not going to start. I mean, if that's what you think. Well, if it doesn't, then I'll drive you down to Brewster myself, and we'll follow the tow truck back up. Now, that's all. Thank you very much, huh? I'll let you know if we have to talk any further. Uh, uh, but what about Mr. Baldwin's room? Shall I hold it? Sure you don't want some of this, Bobby? That's good stuff. No, thanks. I'm too nervous to drink. All right. Uh, now that we got Scotty and Laura taken care of, where's Jameson's address? Oh, no. I told you to bring that with you when you came here tonight. Scott. Well, you better not forget about him. If he wants his 500 bucks, you better be prepared. No, no. Have I heard anything out about him yet? Well, I made a few calls to some pretty informed people, but I need that address. Okay, okay, I'll get it to you as soon as I can. And the more I think about this, I think he's probably a friend of our cousin Lorraine's. No, he's not, Luke. He only knows her because he knew the guy that she started out with. What happened? Did he see you around when you were in Jacksonville? I don't know, I guess so. I saw him around a couple of times. But from the minute that he walked into the hospital, I pretended that I'd never seen him before in my life. Yeah, I guess you had to do that. But I got a feeling he knows the whole story about you in Jacksonville. Luke, nobody in Port Charles knows that story, and nobody ever will, ever. 
Well, then you better get me that address and let me move on Janemanson before he spills the story. Okay, I will, I will. I'll, I'll take care of Janemanson. As long as I get Laura put away for good. <laughs> Mr. Higgins, listen, uh, I listened to what you say, but I think we should have gone ahead and called the tow truck. Just humor me, all right, Scotty? Look, I know what you're thinking. You think that I canceled that tow truck, which would give me an excuse to spend some time with Laura in that room. But I never made that reservation. Now, would you please... Scotty, that? Scotty, it's late and it's cold out. Just please try to start the car, all right? Why not? Sorry if I overstayed my welcome. I just really got involved in hearing about Gary's book. Well, I'm glad you were here to help celebrate our time. Gary, I meant what I said about looking over those contracts. And I meant what I said about selling my half of the business. I'll talk to you first thing in the morning. I'll be in the office. Good night. Thanks. Okay. Oh, give our best to Dory when you see her. I will. Okay. Good night. Good night. Well, you didn't speak to Tracy for very long after you finally got a hold of her. No, she was busy entertaining. She couldn't really talk much, but she was really excited. I'm going to have lunch. I'm going to have to tell her everything went on in New York. I see. Of course, she believed in me right from the beginning, right when she first read these. It wasn't any surprise to her that Drake wanted to publish the book. Gary, I believe in you, too. I just don't want to see you throw away everything that you've worked so hard all of your life for, and then maybe someday find out that it, it's a mistake. You know, Gene, I always thought that Howie cornered the market on doom and gloom. I'm not quite so sure anymore. Honey, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just saying that this writing is a whole new world for you. Well, research was a whole new world for you. But I wasn't talking to you like you were going to be falling flat on your face like you and Howie were to me tonight. Harry, my work is related to my profession. It's work I've already done. And writing a book is the farthest thing away from mine, which is fine. Because I hate my job. And I hated that practice. I know you do, but at least it'll be there if you... If what, Gina? If I fail? I didn't say you were going to fail, Gary. Well, then what are you saying? Proceed with caution, go slowly? We are not of the privileged class that can dare to go out and take a chance, do something exciting? All I'm saying is, I love you, and I don't want to see you disappointed. Well, I already am, Gina. I'm disappointed that I have to go to somebody like Tracy Quartermain or Julian Drake to find the encouragement and support I thought I could get from my wife. Gary, I am trying, trying hard to be supportive. Oh, save it for your little rabbits in the lab. I'm going to go on back. Gary! Scotty, good to see you. Get the car fixed? Well, I didn't have to, because after the Webbers left, Higgins drove me down to the car, and it started up like there was nothing wrong with it. Higgins? Yeah. What's he doing up there? Maybe what? Williams got in touch with him after he left. No, no, it, it wasn't Williams. Somebody else called and said Laura was up at the lodge. But whose business would that be? I wish I knew, Gail, but I think it's the same person that called to report Laura past her curfew. He said some other things to get her in trouble tonight. Oh, Scotty, I hope you're wrong. No, I'm not, Monica. And unless I can prove it, Higgins is going to give a report to Judge Stallman. I could put Laura away this time. Mr. Higgins, if Scotty said he didn't make that room reservation, then he didn't. Now, I don't know what else to tell you. Dr. Weber, when Laura and Scotty were seeing each other before David Hamilton, did either one of them ever give you any reason to doubt their word? Well, to be perfectly honest, yes. There were one or two instances where Laura lied to us about where they were spending their time or, or how. But you don't think that that was the case tonight? Absolutely not. My daughter was genuinely concerned about missing her curfew, and she was upset when she called us. Well, I do still want to talk to Laura before I make my report. Good, and I think you ought to talk to Scotty again, too. I'm sure he was thrown by everything that happened tonight. He might be able to come up with some answers tomorrow. Well, I think we'll all be able to think a little more clearly tomorrow. You won't be talking to Judge Stallman before then, will you? No, no, Dr. Weber. I want to get all my facts straight before I make my report. But I've got to be honest with you about something. Of course. 
Now, if someone doesn't come up with a very good explanation for what went on at the lodge tonight, now, I'm afraid Judge Stallman's going to have very serious reservations about letting Laura remain in your custody. <laughs> Thank you.